to hour of arc arrival and i'm sitting here being co-host That's hard this to speak, isn't it? Hour of arc arrival. i know i have to actually think about it every single time it's it's ridiculous so i am co like co-hosting with my brother greg in the band how are you doing today man not a bad man yourself i mean we had this chat earlier i'm i'm pretty good but you know i'm still diabetic for, for so. the record of the podcast <laughs> um, but we're joined here today by our manager, the man, the myth, and eh. the mistake, <laughs> <laughs> Jay Burnett from the Action Management. How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, sorry, the the dog just brushed past all my agenda boards on the wall, and everything just fell down. Um, oh, no. oh, so no. had that been caught on camera, that would have been actually quite class. This anyway, yeah, I'm good, man. Really good. <laughs> so, jumping straight into it, I want to know about the deep history of reaction management. How did it start? Just jumping straight in. Oh, this is actually quite good. This is good prep for me because I've got to do a couple of these for a couple of um, uh, college and uh, university um, oh, classes gosh. that contacted me over the last few days and asked me to do like little videos for their classes. But we um, can't say we so don't do you well. <laughs> Basically, so uh, I won't say long story short because you've got an hour and a half to kill here. So, yeah, uh, so you're, you're perfectly I, fine. I was, um, if you go way back, um, I was a, I was a singer myself. I was in bands um, here in here in Scotland. Um, I went over to France for a while. Did some, did a lot of touring. Which recorded a couple take. of albums. In between all that. Um, I did my HMD in music, uh, music performance and music management in Springburn. Um, so when I left there, it did a wee bit of promotion, you know. Um, uh, there was no, there was no internet, right? This is the 90s, so there was no internet, so everything was hands on, you know. Um, we promoted a few bands around Glasgow. I gave, I gave, I gave Biffy Clyro some of their first ever Glasgow shows. As oh, really? To think about, you know. Oh, that is, um, I didn't even know that. My yeah, God. so I mean, see, see, see bands that play quiet shows and they go, oh, this is shit, we're going to go nowhere. Um, I, I've seen Biffy, Fly, Biffy Clyro play <laughs> ten, 10 people, do you know what I mean? Um, my God. So what happens to the best of us? My God, I, 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 I actually had no idea. I just thought you were like, yeah, let's fucking do this. Um, yeah, my sister it. was good. My sister was good friends with them. They're from Kilmarnock, so um, she was good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but um, so from there, it was just it was just like promoting bands, small time really, on and off, on and off in between uh, doing the touring with uh, with with the band Pyro. Um, it was a French rock band. It was like a kind of like sort of Bon Jovi type stuff. Um, we oh, we, yes. we toured we toured Europe, did a lot of that. Really good fun, man. Um, but I uh, I got homesick a lot um, mm. and ended up ended up chucking the band and coming back here and did a lot of pop punk stuff which was more enjoyable because i was kind of doing it with my pals you know yeah. uh, as opposed to being over there with this as professional as they were and they were signed to uh, warner chapelle and all that it was it was good and it was all really top top end stuff but i had more fun back in glasgow like playing singing gigs with my pals you know was, um, was there a specific like gig that you just turned around and said fuck this isn't home and you've properly felt that um, feeling the homesick. Was there a specific like gig or time? I th no, I think I think I'd in my head I'd convinced myself like halfway through a tour. Um, we did. We were we were doing these tours where we would play in France. Um, they have a a, a a record store called Fnac F A F N A C, which is equivalent of like H M V. Um, and we did nice. a, a Fnac acoustic show in the afternoon and we did a live electric show in whatever town we did but we done something like 30 shows over five weeks so it was like there wasn't a lot of a lot of breaks and france is a big country so there's a lot yeah. up and down so i think I'd, I'd done two albums with them um and it just got to the point where i wasn't even i wasn't enjoying it anymore i was just going through the motions uh, and yet this is this is something i'd always wanted to do you know yeah. um but because I just think because it was um, 
none of my own friends were there, or uh, you know, it was a specific. It was a very French audience, because obviously it was France. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it, was, it was so far away. But I think I convinced myself, and I, I always thought in the back of my head, I can go back home and I can find something else. Um, but that was a big opportunity that I sort of just walked away from. Um, and uh, I, I was happy with that, you know, because it, we ended up doing a lot of sort of pop punk stuff and everybody's seen the sort of stuff we've done with um, with Dave Courtney when he took us on as a manager, um, you know, the gangster Dave Courtney. Um, I think uh, that's been quite well documented as well, but I can, I can bring that up as well. And then obviously yeah. in between all that, in between all that, it was just a lot of promoting stuff. I set up myself as JB Promotions um, in round about the 2000s and done a lot of gigs in um, the garage, Catty, um, uh, Ivory Blacks, all these sort of, all the usual places, you know, um, on and off. And reaction came about seven or eight years ago and it was a one band, one man thing. It was me and I needed a, I needed a, a, a name of a company just to call myself because I was managing Altered Sky. All right. Um, that was, that was, that was the start. I was only managing. Yeah, I was so only managing. Sky was the first. What's that? Altered Sky was your first band on management. That I managed. Yep. Yeah, uh -huh. The fuck. Um, so I mean, I'd seen them live, um, and I thought they were really good, and I was like, you guys could do something, but you, you know, you need to organise yourselves a bit more. You just need to get yourselves a manager, and they're like, well. We kind of like the way you've, you you organise us when we do our shows. So would you do? And I was like, no, I, I don't manage bands. Um, uh, and I thought about it, and I thought, fuck it, I'll do it. You know. <laughs> uh, so I was with them for uh, right up until what 18, 18 months ago when they when they split up. Um, and prior to them splitting up, I'd always said to myself, I should do this. You know. Um, I don't want to blow my trumpet, but I'm clearly doing something right. Because oh, definitely. Sky been really I'm right, man. Contacts, contacts, you know. So oh, I should yeah. maybe um, do this with other bands. Um, but I'd had that thought for a while. I'd never done it. It was actually my girlfriend that convinced me, listen, you're clearly good at this. Why don't you do it? Um, so I think um, I thought, fuck it, right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to make this a pro pro proper professional management company, um, brought in a few bands that I kind of had worked with previously, Take Today, Salt River Shakedown, some of the bands that are still here on the roster two years later, you know? Mm. Um, and then from there, it was the roster grew and grew, and now there's 23 bands and five Damn. agents, you know? 23? Aye, because you've um, insane, gone man. away, Pleasure Run. Isn't there an agent in, somewhere in Asia now and everything as well? Oh, yeah, America. Um, no, right. wait, bands um, in America. Yeah, one of uh, Josh has just signed a, an American pop punk band from Milwaukee. Um, I'm currently talking to a band in France um, as well. <laughs> so I know it's not it's not Pyro, but it's not my old band. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that agent Jed, um, he he was the the tour promoter and booker. When Old Sky went over to Asia and played um, played Japan and played uh, played Probably the Philippines, yeah. um, that was that was about three three four years ago. That was that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do between me and Jed together was pull pulling pulling off a. It was hard enough trying to book a UK tour, but trying to book a Japanese and a Philippines tour. <laughs> can you imagine that? You know. Uh, <laughs> I, can, I can thankfully say I cannot imagine that and I don't really fucking want to. But it was the best thing that ever happened to them, you know, it was really good, mm. really, really good. Are you... Right, but but oh, are they really big. split up considering their post this year? The post this year was a little bit of a tease. Anna, Anna they got back together, but actually they didn't get back together. They, they went into the studio with um, their old guitarist Tara and Tara's girlfriend, who was a drummer, and had a jam. And there, I think it was just, um, just to see what it would be like, you know, if there was still like any passion there or anything. <clears throat> um, they're too good a band, I would say, for them to, to, to disappear and not do anything, you know, because they've done uh, so well, so much has happened, you know. 
um, when you consider it. But at the moment, I couldn't I couldn't tell you what what our plans are at all. You know, mm. um, it's hard yeah. enough keeping on top of uh, nine bands, which is I <laughs> which I manage at the moment. Nine out twenty three bands on the roster, of which nine are mine. Well, clearly you're doing an amazing gone? job to have nine out of the twenty three bands. Oh, definitely. I and God, now we're beautiful right. faces. I know. Including you guys, yeah, who've uh, who've just had a, a rather good uh, single and EP launch, you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, far better than expected. I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no, not some, at all. We've both done really good We're amazed ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we are ma- amazed ourselves. Like, it's all different. Uh, it's a different as- uh, approach to releasing a song, as you've taught us uh, towards the start of the year, how we should do it. And has been pretty fucking mental, especially getting interviews and landing on a newspaper. It's just mental. Yeah, I mean, I had people from my uh, like my friends group message me, it's like, here, my grand saw you in the paper. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, damn, yeah, I'm in the paper. So then I just started, <laughs> every single morning I'd go, in and I'd go in the kitchen, I'd be making myself a, like a bowl of cereal or something, or a ready break, because, you know, I'm a child like that. And I <laughs> have <laughs> 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 oh, fucking ready break, right? That is good. That is, that shit's good with some sugar. Mm. So my parents were just fucking <laughs> coming, right? <laughs> are you are you looking for an endorsement? <laughs> I mean, hey, ready break. If if you're looking, <laughs> I'll be happy. <laughs> you know what? That's just the type of thing you would get. So you know, someone will <laughs> someone will pick. Bags will pick up a. Uh, like an endorsement with I don't know some you know um, a some big guitar company or uh, um, you know Greg will, Greg, Greg will pick up like some some really cool uh, mic endorsement and you'll be like mm, ready cereal. break <laughs> 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 it's compl- is actually, I, I'm laughing but I should actually be quite serious here that is a hundred percent me. I'd either be that we've always talked about it. if I was to ever get a full endorsement from anyone outside of music, it would be Pepsi. It would be Pepsi all the way because I drink so much of it, it's, it's nuclear. It's, it's, it's like he has a Niagara Falls in his fridge just pouring out Pepsi ready for yeah. him. That's what it's like. Yeah, with just uh, like oh. sexy, sultry music just playing as that. Oh. You, guys, <laughs> you guys have got something going on just now. Anyway, haven't you behind the scenes with some kind of endorsement? Um, uh, do we? <laughs> do we? <laughs> I, I thought you said uh, just from looking at your no, post. Uh, uh, don't, no, Mag has oh, right, not Mag, endorsed yeah. by Ibanez. It's, uh, he gets sent, it's like, is it, sat, sat, I don't know, Mark knows the, he's, Mark he's knows like the story. Orin, right, he's yeah. So he messaged someone. When I say messaged, I really mean he was he was being himself and pesting someone at Ibanez. Who, <laughs> someone, sorry, someone who worked with Ibanez quite closely, and he was like, "Hey, hey, 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 try and get me in. Hey, 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 try and get me in." And he just kind of did that for I think about eight months, and then he finally said, "Okay, shut the fuck up. Here's the guitar." <laughs> oh, <right. Wow>. <laughs> It's still kind of pretty cool though. Like he's, he's, I think you could say he's working with Ibanez because he's defi- he yeah, you can definitely say that. He gets sent. I just don't know what kind of level he's at because I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of levels that you get. Uh, but it's pretty cool. So like you get, you get he's, hmm. uh, the guitars you get sent. You know, like there's different think, guitars. Yeah, like that, I, so. mean, I think the closest he has to an endorsement is with legendary pickups. <laughs> I think he is actually endorsed by Legendary Pickups. I don't know, man. I think it's just because he uses like every guitar nearly in his. Uh... I, mean, I think he's. I think it's on Legendary's website. Is it? I, I, or like something like that. See, this is this is all done a communication error with Mag. He doesn't tell you the full details. Yeah, well, that, that's what I was talking about. I wasn't even talking about the Ibanez thing. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck's he talking? Okay, about? we're just we're just wasted about ten minutes talking about Ibanez. <laughs> It's a good story though. Because I know story. I know they uh they also um do stuff with Nishima as well. Yeah, that mag is uh, uh, Ross was the one who That's got Mag like, yeah, pointed them towards. Mm. Here, did you know that Facebook has removed all your bio information on your pages? I can't get anybody's bio page at all. <laughs> you talk to me? Yeah, I'm talking in general, like you can't physically cannot see anybody's bio yeah, um, on their 
Exactly. Remember beforehand, before they, they, they turned it into MySpace, kind of, um, it was, uh, there was like a big picture you could click on, you could constantly edit the bio stuff. Oh, um, I've done away with all that completely now, and it's impossible to get information. Yeah, it's a bit shite. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sure. Because you can't even, you can't even see, it must be on their, uh, their website that you will be able to see Mag's information, because... Wait, what? Well, if he's okay. up there, that would be a good idea to get that promo there. Hmm. I mean, I, I, yeah, I know, Mag. What are you playing? I it? think. Yo, I'm I, gonna. I'll, I'll mail him, right? Uh, you're you're gonna be on the phone. I'm say, "Oh, Mag, what the fuck are you playing at?" No telling <laughs> us about this in Dor Schmidt. He'll be like, "What? What?" He'll say, "I've just, I've just mailed him <laughs> just to just to confirm this to move on." So. Yeah, he's bought, I think he's bought three or four pickups from him, so yeah, by the fucking sound off him with the guitar. Three or four so. sets, sets of pickups. Because, yeah. you know, it's for full uh, two humbuckers in a guitar. But let's talk a bit more about then Pyro. Tell us about, like, the history behind that. Like, you know, how did it start and all that shit? Um... I was, what was I doing at the time? Once again, I was in Glasgow doing a bit of, between bands, um, mm. between bands in Glasgow. Um, what was I doing at the time? I was doing, I, I used to work for a company that recorded, that did voiceovers, like for the blind. Like I read, I read magazines for, for blind people um, and they would get sent That's the tapes awesome. to the house. Like, so I used to read, I used to read like the rock magazines, I used to read Kerrang. So basically I would sit in the studio with the, the latest edition of Kerrang and there'd be a producer at the other end and I would just, um, <laughs> I'd done it with my mate Andy Lennon who, um, who runs, uh, who runs a big uh, uh, sort of filmography, uh, videography company now as well and he used to play bass and the Exploited, big, big, uh, big famous punk band. Um, so he, we, we did it together and we would just read Kerrang. Um, Did some ever... guy would record it. We'd play. We would play music in between it, and it would uh, it would get sent off to to blind people. You know, I can't even remember what it was called. Q and review. Q and review. That's what it was called. Did, did you ever start um, start off just saying, "This is Kerrang Magazine with Jay Burnett"? <laughs> or some shit. To be like fair, that. we used to always have a few. Dude, that's, dude, that's uh, your new intro. Sorry, <laughs> that, that's your new intro, dude. That exact voice. <laughs> The fuck we need voice. to do it. <laughs> we used to we used to have a few drinks beforehand to loosen us up, and we thought and we, we just had a laugh with it, and we thought we would get into trouble. But then we started getting like feedback from these blind people going, "That was the best. That was the best issue ever." Do you know? Uh, because people normally just go and Axel from Guns N' Roses said, but and, you know, just this pure monotone voice. But we were actually sort of talking like. Like, like you, you were know, just talking to him, he's like, oh, fuck, he's, you know he's I mean? dead. Yeah, kind of... Oh, no. <laughs> that <came laughs> <in. laughs> but anyway, as I was reading Kerrang, there was an advert in Kerrang, an advert in Kerrang in the, the Musicians Wanted, but and I don't even think you get that anymore, but there, there used to be, and it was French band, require singer, blah, 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 blah. Um, facts over, facts, listen to me, how old am oh. I? Facts over. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Over these details. Um, and um, they got back to me and said, right, okay, uh, uh, we want you over for an audition. So I had to go over to Paris for an audition. Um, and uh, they hit me with an instrumental uh, tape. And they said, right, we need you to write a song over that. And uh, we'll record it tomorrow morning. And that'll be your whole basis on whether you get the gig or not. No? Fucking hell. Is, yeah. I mean, that's that's pressure and a half right there. Oh yeah, literally because I I thought I would get to meet the band properly. I met two members. They took me to a hotel and went right. There's a song, um, and we'll see you in the morning. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> Jeez, oh, that's a bit that's a bit brutal, like. But you know, hey, you've done it. Even yeah, even when uh, Greg uh, came into the band, like actually he was just sitting there in the corner in the practice Oh, right, come on. on! Shut the fuck up and let me speak, son. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, the two of you is talking about it. Like, is it awkward? It's like, not a push. And he was just kind of like looking around like while Mag and I were freaking headbanging and while the bass at the time was kind of going, Ugh. And then what, he just comes <laughs> out with this massive scream and he's like, 
we're just like, hell yeah, come on. You're part, you're, you're in this now. It was just <laughs> hearing like that, your your story there. That's like the complete opposite of that. It's like you no, don't. No, 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 no. I so stood. Weird. I put one foot on a stool, improvising in my head what you were playing. And I'm like, right, I could do this, this, and this. And I'm like, well, apparently I have a wrestling bitch face 24 seven. So, and my wife could um, back me up on that. Yeah, she can attest to that as well. <laughs> 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 in a court of law. Where resting bitch face was the crime, Greg. You are so far deep in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Anyway, this this podcast isn't about my but resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened after you got the gig? Like, was it a smooth transition, or was it just kind of like so much piled in at once? Um, the they were recording an album, and um, they they'd actually been quite. Uh, they'd been quite for a French band, for a French rock band. They'd been quite famous in the like the late eighties, and they'd played the like the likes of Def Leppard and that kind of stuff. Oh right, that's um, awesome. So they but they'd been quiet for like five or six years. So this was them sort of having a sort of comeback. Mm. Um, and their last singer, um, I can't remember if he was dead or he's <laughs> now dead. I can't remember, Jesus. but he was like a really Ooh, he was an alcoholic, and they got rid of, he was called. It was called it was called Dave Danger. I mean, there's a fucking rock name for you, Dave Danger, Ooh, right? <laughs> yeah. But he was English too, and they'd only ever want they, they want they always wanted a British singer just because all their songs were uh, were to be sung in English, and it was a lot easier for obviously a British person mm. to sing in English than it was for a French person just because of the the enunciation, you know? Yeah. Um, but they, they loved the fact that I was Scottish and half French as well, and <laughs> I did a lot. I did a, I did a lot of gigs in my kilt in France. A lot of gigs in my kilt. I seen a seen a photo that you put up on Facebook that challenge thing. Uh, that was in the paper. Is that right? Oh with, yeah, with the that, kilt. that was in the kilt. You were wearing a guitar as well. Yeah. Did you play guitar for that band? Not at that all. Like, that... Not at all. They gave me a guitar, and you can tell from me holding it that I've never held a fucking guitar <laughs> in my life. Um, <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you. you I'm, I go as far as the Guitar Hero guitar, and that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I think it's, it's shameful that I've been doing this for so long, and yet, if I was to pick up a guitar today, I'd know about three chords. You know, that, I think that's shameful. I, think about it. I mean... <laughs> play three chords, you can play it the entire what, last 30 years of pop, so you, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I good. thought you were going to bad mouth a band there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, no quite. Uh, oh, oh, my DI box just dropped. Ooh, Your what, box. sorry? Nothing. The DI box almost dropped. Oh, oh you mean the Scarlet? Actually, it says focus right on it, but yes, we know the company's got. That has as much on. a scratch on it. It's done shiny. You'll be buying me a new one. I'm gonna paint a scratch on it just to piss you off. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's gonna piss me off, and I hope you start running. <laughs> anyway, yeah, such anyway. a distraction, Mark. What can I say? Jay, welcome to the podcast that we've done so far. <laughs> this is why it takes us an hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> just so much crap. Oh, and we get off topic way too much, but hey, so. They were recording. What album was it that they were recording? Um, but what was this one called? Um, I can't remember. Um, two <laughs> seconds. Right. I've got it in a frame in my toilet. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Wow! What the best place to put your first album. Hey, it's what? called. It's called Stop the World. <laughs> Hey, what, what do you think of oh, that album, no, Jay? Oh, well, I hang it on my toilet next to my phone, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I've got the two yeah. albums that I've done in little frames, and they're both in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I mean, want, you want, I'll tell you a really funny story. The room I'm in just now, um, a while back, I used to do Airbnb, right? Oh, um, right. And a... Uh, <sighs> couple of years ago we had um some french people over in the in the in the in the, in the bedroom in the spare bedroom 
and we just sort of came out and I used to just keep you see a B&B so it's not like hotels you just keep up all your decorations or mm. not your decorations you know I mean, but like your any, any artwork or stuff you've got on the walls as you do you know right. and the guy came through and he went he went um, I, I've seen the I've seen the I've seen the uh, the album in the toilet I went oh he said is that you I went yeah he said I used to be a fan of Pyro I was like oh no way <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's oh, brilliant. That's mental. Oh, it's a small, a small world when that kind of shit happens. There, so oh, it was just listen, about I, we played, we played the Hard Rock Cafe on the Champs Elysees in Paris, um, a um, really big gig. Um, and at the end of it, this uh, this girl came over to me. Um, she was with an older lady, and they were tugging, tugging my kilt. Uh, as we were just, you know, at the end of a gig, at the end of a gig, you're packing up stuff, you know. And I turned round, I went, I went, yeah, uh, hi. And she went, are you Scottish? And the, with that kind of accent, I went, uh, yeah. I goes, yeah, so much. I says, where are you from? She goes, I'm from Govan. I went, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> so in the middle of Paris, <laughs> someone comes up to me who's a fan, and she's been Govan. <laughs> my fucking god it had to be governed didn't it did, did your face just kind of do that thing you know like ah hi like when you hear that someone's oh, from definitely. the rap block like <laughs> you, you go to Stirling and someone's like oh yeah I'm from main I'm from like the main street kind of bit in, in Stirling and you're like oh that's, that's quite sweet I'm from the rap block and you're like fuck okay bye bye <laughs> Just fucking running away. I say that. If anyone from Govan knows where I live, please don't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I'm you actually... Rap block. rap block as well, Mark. Rap block as well. Like, a lot of people know me from the rap block, if not for good reasons. But uh, moving on from that... <laughs> we should... Uh, dude, you should totally have, the, like, a button. Like, wait, oh, put in the, in the, when you edit the audio, just put in... Like you putting a stupid voice on saying distraction, and then we have the distraction. <laughs> bit. And then let's go back to the talk. Yeah, that we should have that. Oh no! Now I need to fucking find a voice to do it in, and now I need to. Oh, oh now you've given me way too much of an idea. Go on. Stupid ass idea. Distraction. Just with a fucking. No, that was shit. Do go. E e e e going in the background all the way through it. Sounded like a bin lawyer there. Oh, actually, I'm anyway. actually getting a bit too fucking warm now. My God. Oh, so Mark, you got? Oh, keep going. I, I think I need you, some you, water, but I, I'm no anywhere near water. I'm fucking gonna die. Um, so what was it? What, what was it like touring with Pyro? Like, did um, apart, apart from what we already know, like you obviously getting quite homesick throughout that yeah, homesick. It, it was I mean, it was good it was um uh, one of my favorite ones was we played uh, Lyon and I've got a lot of family in Lyon that's where my mum's mm-hmm. from and like they all came to I don't think they came to the, the, the nighttime show but they all came to the record store um mm-hmm. and it was just it was really cool just seeing all, all your family there because you're kind of thinking I've done it here, you know. I, I, I've uh, I, I've made it because all my life that's all I'd ever wanted to be. I just wanted to be a a singer and a rock band, you know. Um, and I think I think that's why I do what I do now as well. I think that's why I still stuck with music because um, whereas my maybe dreams of that kind of thing are, are now over, it's 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 um, it's still in me that I want to see other bands. Mm-hmm. So you love the dream, and, and, and I want to live through that as well. So. Um, that's probably why, compared to a lot of managers out there that I do know, I get very passionate with the bands that I work with, which is yeah. which, is, which is good too because I want I w- it's not just a job. I want I really really want to see success. You know. Mm. I mean, we when we like talked to you like first few times, we could tell how like passionate you you were. Not just the, maybe it wasn't really your go to music per se but because maybe it was because of how much we wanted it that you wanted us to want it as well yeah you know and hearing that it it's like um like say a father or a grandfather just kind of looking at his kids and just going oh calm yourself down by the way 
Not yeah, he had really shit examples, doesn't he? Fucking grandfather. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was meaning from like. Oh, the did market. I see that out loud, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just cut that um, out and just make it look like you two, you know, had an outburst. But it's um, no, no, no. But it's true because a lot of the bands that um, that come to me um, and I get so many emails every month um, mm. for bands. But I, it's I could make a lot of money doing this, a lot of money, and have like 30, 30 bands a month I'm managing. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't be able to, to do anything with them. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to give them all the time necessary. So you have to just pick and choose who you want to work with, you know? Mm. Um, so uh, it's, it's great to work with you guys. And it's good seeing a band like yourselves who, who well, every band has to start somewhere. But you can see, even, even over the last few months, you can see how you have adapted. Mm-hmm. And you've learnt more about the business, and you've learnt more yeah. about how you need PR and how you don't just throw a song out and release it. You know, there's just so much more that goes into it. You know, and, yeah. and the fact that you're learning your own stuff as well. You know, that that you that um, it's all it's all self recorded. Um, and, and Greg's doing fucking videos and all sorts of <laughs> stuff. You know, you've really jumped into it now. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think seeing like getting the what's it called the not just like your experience, like, fr- like you. Uh, let me try this again, right? Because I've got it in my head, I just can't speak. So, it, from getting your experience firsthand, like learning from that, it's it's insane. And but I mean, with these times, especially, it's it, it's nothing like anything we've or our parents or our grandparents or even great grandparents have probably experienced. So it's a completely new world, but yet you're, you, it's like, from my, well, my, my perspective anyway, you guys can um, say whether it is or not, but it's almost as if it's not even stunted um, reaction, pretty much. It's like, it's actually boosted, and that just means that not only have has the change come, but it's also how amazingly you've adapted to that, which is just unreal for the bands and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, um, it's all, it, it, it's never, it's not been a smooth ride as well, you know, because mm. there have been so many uh, mistakes along the way with certain bands, so many mistakes managing all the sky as well. But mm. um, if you didn't have those mistakes, you wouldn't, I don't think I'd be where I am now because you have to learn from those mistakes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and move on and, and just learn not, not to do them again, you know. One of the biggest mistakes I think we did was when we actually Alter Sky gets signed to an independent label um, called right. Native Records, um, but it was awful. It was almost like we were, we were at a point where things were really, really ready to go and happen, and Native Records signed them, and we thought, right, here we go. But Native Records just sort of sat back and done fuck all for like 18 months. Um, um, and we were still trying to do stuff, and uh, negotiate things here and there, and they were like, "Well, we'll do this and we'll do that," but they were all talk. Um, and then they, in the end, we ended up just walking out the contract with them. Um, so it was a case of they were they were you know at the pinnacle of where they could have really went on another level, mm. um, and they lost maybe two years of that. I mean, they they, they got there eventually, but they got there on their own, you know, or yeah. through me. But um, <laughs> Yeah, but they wasted. I would say that was a good eighteen months, and I was part of that decision. You know, I was like, "Yeah, I think, I think we need to do that. This, this would be really good for you." But um, I would never. I would, you know, because of that. Now I'm wary of record labels, mm-hmm. um, and I would be unless the offer is in the favour of the band. Um, then I, I, I would tell them just to hold back. And wait, you know, I think that's that's what. Um you hear 10 years ago, even like 20, 30 years ago, there was a big thing, like people just wanted to make it. So as soon as they got like a small record label, it was true of um, Trivium, I think it was. And they're, when they first got signed by uh, a label or something, and it just blew up in their face. It was like, hey, yeah, we'll give you this money. And then they didn't sell out enough CDs to even give them that money back. And it was just okay. like taking advantage of like kids' excitement, you know? It was like getting a big. Well, you, well, there, there's a good example with um, was it Yashin? 
Now, Yashin were with an indie label, I'm pretty certain, and they get picked up by Sony oh, four or five really? years ago. Um, oh. And then and then it all went quite nice. That's a massive, that's a massive, obviously, uh, <laughs> record deal. And everyone thought, well, here we go, this is it. And they went very, very quiet because they were recording an album. Um, and, and, you know, once a record label picks you up, they're in control. Yeah. And I think they were with Sony a couple of years. Um, I might be wrong about this, but an album may have came out, but it was either pulled or dropped, and and Sony just dropped them, you know, like like nothing. Um, and they'd wasted like two, three, maybe four years of their lives. And I think they split up after that, you know. Now, that was a band that, that, that was huge, you know, Yashin. Jesus um, but it just shows you because... because they don't practice in they... Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah, I have a funny story about them. Was it Yashin? I'm sure it was Yashin. We're not going to get into that because this is a podcast. Anyway, uh, I was going to say, do you want to get into this story so you can get off your chest? Because you seem a wee bit. No, no, no. That's no. <laughs> okay. But I'll tell you what, as soon as this podcast is over, I'm straight on to Greg. Going oh, yeah, to me story. too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'll more... probably tell you, Mark. That's you about probably... my past music career. You probably ought to tell me about we'll just say it. We'll just say it involves a liar, okay? Does that... Oh, right, you know? okay. I think I do. Right, okay. We're, we're on the same page now. Maybe, but there's a few pages with that title. <laughs> there is a few pages. That You are a one million percent correct on that. <laughs> so I, I'm like, <sighs> I'm thinking through, through a few of these, you know, pages here. So I'm like, hmm, okay. But <laughs> back to the, the actual <laughs> non-distracting conversations. Greg. Yes. <laughs> fucking hell. Whoever says we're not professional, we're professional, I swear. (laughs) No, we're not. But, um, let's, uh, here's a, like, uh, you might know the answer to it, you might not, or maybe you'll give us an amazing story about it. But when was the first time you knew that you wanted to pursue something in music? Was it just that you saw someone or even was it a gradual thing as a i remember as a kid i liked to sing and i used to i used to do the thing where you would you put your headphones on and i would yeah. imagine it was me fucking singing or you know uh, in miming into a mirror or that kind of shit I on your own it was you know? <laughs> oh every time you touch watch oh you guys need to do a full-on metal version of every time. Oh, you oh yes, oh, yeah, please, Greg. Greg. Oh, no it's been done. I don't give a shit. I it's wanted not... to do Billy, uh, Billy Eilish. Is it Billy Eilish? I forgot a fucking name now. <laughs> Bad guy. Billy Eilish. Yeah, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I- Eilish. I mean, Eilish. Eilish. Oh, yeah, it's Billy Eilish. <laughs> anyway, back to you, Jay. Sorry. Yeah. What was it? Uh, um. Oh yeah. So um. So that uh, as a kid. I think I was doing that, but then um, I uh, I just kind of forgot about it, you know. I a teenager and then moved on, and um, I went to study um, I went to study law and media and the communication industries. Um, oh, I know, I know. And and whilst in that, I met some other people who were who were studying the same course. And they were like, oh, we're, we're putting a band together, you know, just for fun. What do you play? And I went, oh, oh, I'm a singer. Never fucking sang in my life in a studio. <laughs> um, and uh, we we went we went into the studio and we, you know, I'd never been in a, I'd never been in a rehearsal studio or anything. So this was it all a while. It was cool. And I think we knocked out a few covers, you know, like we done, and we done a Chili's cover and we done like Rocking in the Free World or something. I can't remember. Aww. But that gave me a taste for it. Mm. Um, and then I, I left the course, like, after, like, a month or two. And I was like, no, I want to, I want to do music, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I completely walked out of that whole sort of law and the communication industry type thing. Um, I, um, I wanted to do, I wanted to do music. And uh, I found myself a real band. Um, first band I was ever in was a band from Greenock, and they were called um, Rumblefish. <laughs> Rumblefish? <laughs> Rumblefish, yes. Oh my gosh, that is... I don't know if that's a great name or just a name. Um, um, they, 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 I remember them because 
Um, they were a Greenock band, and we did, we did we did a few gigs at, at, around Greenock and stuff. But we did, um, I think it was like a battle of the bands in Greenock, the Town Hall, and Town Hall in Greenock's amazing, it's beautiful, and it was rammed. It was final. We got to the final, and it was like a thousand people in there, which is weird, you know, for like Jeez. unsigned bands. But mm. um, we won it, you know, we won the battle of the bands. <laughs> And I think the prize was like, like um, it was like so many days recording and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I was absolutely buzzing. And I got a phone call the next day from the one of the band members going, hey, Jay, just to let you know, um, we're going to continue as a three-piece and not a four-piece, and our guitarist is going to be the singer now. So, um, yeah, you're sat. <laughs> what? So that was like the day after. So I'd gone from a huge high to a, to a massive low, and I was why, like, why did that go down? Did they um, discuss it with you? No, well, I, I knew, I, I knew. God, this is going back twenty years or so. But I remember, <laughs> I remember that this new guitarist came in and he was best friends with the other guitarist, and the other one was like, you know, we could be a three piece and I could sing as well. So it was, it was something like that. But um, that spun beyond to join other bands and um, uh, and obviously the whole pyro thing. And funnily enough, about ten years later. And I'd, I'd done the whole pyro thing. I'd, I'd went abroad, I'd toured, I'd recorded albums, I'd played with some really big uh, bands of support as well. And I bumped into him in Greenock, one of the guys that sacked me, and I hadn't seen him since that day. And he was like, gee, how are you doing? I went, oh, I'm doing all right, blah, blah, blah. I said, so you still you still playing? He goes, I were actually, I'm still in the same band. We still we rehearse once a week and we do a gig up the pub, blah, blah, blah. He's like, so what have you been doing? I went, oh. What have I been doing? <laughs> well, roll it your <laughs> sleeves, son. Aye. So that was that was a good moment. <laughs> oh, that was a good uh, slapping back in the face, eh? Yeah. But I mean, throughout all these different bands, I was in a punk, uh, pop punk band called Ocean Diesel, with my mates that I'd, I'd grown up with, um, and I think that was that was probably the happiest time. That's that, that's when we recorded with uh, the gangster Dave Courtney and the whole thing. We you know, Charlie Bronson, you know, that, that, that uh, the guy in jail. Um, so we did a lot of stuff with that, um, and that was cool, and that was in Sun and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably my, my fondest memories. Hmm. Your least, that's, a, that's what people always miss out, your least favourite memories of, like, aside from which I assume was the... In- Being like, sacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I've I've been in that situation as well. It's not it's not it's not fucking. Fun. It's a horrible. I mean, I've done it myself as a manager. I've had to yeah. sack people in bands. I mean, I've um, sacked people as well. It's 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 tough. Even if you know they have to go for the betterment of the band. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, With Altered Sky, tough. I had to sack one, two, three, three <laughs> different three different members over five years. I was just imagining you go there. One, two, twelve, fifteen. <laughs> 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, oh yeah, it's a horrible feeling when you're just told mm-hmm. you. Because when you're in a band, it's, as you know yourselves, it's um, it's not just about the music, it's the camaraderie and yeah. you, it becomes it becomes your, your social life as well. So you build everything around that band, you know? And if yeah, you're man. suddenly told that you, you don't want to be in that anymore, it's like, it's not just the music, it's everything, you know? Mm. I I mind uh, my first band got me absolutely wrecked and told me the band is disbanding and then they actually told my parents that uh, I uh, the band's disbanded and here's me going about thinking that didn't even exist and tell my mom and father were like so you all right and I'm like I'm about right. they're like well the band split up I'm like excuse me <laughs> and I'm like what the fuck so that was uh, that was a fun moment. Oh, I don't know. I remember you telling me that story. I thought you were about to punch me. <laughs> Why? Just Are you using the same room together? No, no, no. no. Thankfully, because I would probably get a slap for half the things I'm saying to him. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's the thing. I feel confident when I'm behind the computer, eh? So I don't get the slap. But you know when he sees me, it's going to be fucking nuclear. Oh, I'm going to get my ass. See, how they normally, they don't normally dig a six foot grave. Well, Mark's about it. 36 foot. Uh, they, they can see me in China. Let's put it that way. That's good. <laughs> it's going to be a full on. Full fucking on. Uh, anyway. Oh, what was I going to ask there? 
I had a good question as well, and you just fucked up, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, fuck me. It's a good, good question. Greg, you, you continue until I remember this question. What, what was the last question? Oh, that was uh, like the, the, the... Yeah, the, like the worst... Mo- like, like, let's continue things, yeah. talking about that for a wee bit more. Oh, yeah, let's. Okay, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I, do you know what? I, I can't... I can't think of many, many more. Obviously, I, I don't count mistakes or, like... Like that, ha- that happening because nothing like that's been that bad. I'm trying to think of bands. Maybe Ocean Diesel when they split up. That was kind of like what Greg was saying. Um, we used to re- rehearse in, in, in Barclay Studios, and mm-hmm. I just that turned up as cool. usual for cool? a for a normal rehearsal, and they were all standing in the car park. And I thought that's weird. Um, <laughs> and it was like, oh gee, will you tell them? No, you tell them. No, you tell them. Um, and it was like uh, Jamie, the drummer, was like. Listen, we've decided we're not going to do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. And I think the problem a lot of bands had, and it's probably why I'm sitting here doing what I do now, mm-hmm. problem a lot of bands had was I took control and I was like, I'll get the gigs, um, I'll get us in the newspapers, I'll do this. Kind of like a manager, do you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of bands didn't like that, do you know? Why? I've, 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 I don't know. You're, the, I you're getting them places, though. You're getting <laughs> publicity for them. You're getting... You're, yeah. Doing the managers, what do you fucking yeah. working your ass off? Yeah, getting them gigs and they didn't even appreciate. Oh. It's, it's, it, I think it's one of the. It's a Scottish thing, I think, because we're fucking arseholes. We are. Don't don't lie. We can be utter <laughs> wanks very very much of the time, and I think if if as a group as a collective, if we aren't if you aren't doing something, I think it's. I've seen it a lot in actually bands I've played with. Um, if you're not all partaking in it it's not everyone's victory which is a very poor way of seeing it you know because yeah like, say you're coming in and say yeah you do going in a band and you're like yeah i can do this 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 and this you see like say if you were to come into arc arrival and do that <clears throat> as a member say we would be like oh yeah yes fucking yes uh-huh. this is a great thing <laughs> fucking bassist by the way <laughs> yeah Jay, think... do you want... <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that over like, a six-month period was the time where I'd been in touch with the Sun, I'd been in touch with Front Magazine, and we got we got that like the the big famous gangster Dave Courtney up to sing to sing a song with us, and um, he then took us on as manager, and we went down to London, and he he managed us for a while, and they didn't like the fact that this guy who was once a very famous London gangster was managing us. Um, but I didn't see him as that, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't see if you if you Google Dave Courtney, you'll know who I'm talking about. He's a very sort of threatening looking guy, but um, he, he, was involved with the, he was involved with it. He was involved with the craze and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't see him that way, um, and I think he he, res- he respected me that way because I didn't look at it that way. But the other members of the band, and they're all brand new guys, I think they looked at it as well. This guy still, this guy was a criminal, and this guy's this, you know. Mm. And pretty much, we, I knew the band was going to be splitting up. And I remember one night sitting in a bar, and with the, the band were there, and Dave Courtney was at the bar with me. Um, and I was like, I think this is it. I think once we go back back up to Glasgow, you know, they're going to tell me it's over. I just don't think they're they're liking all this showbiz stuff that's going with it, being in the newspapers and, and whatnot. Um, and I said, maybe uh, he says, maybe I just want too much, Dave. Maybe I'm just asking for too much. And this is something that lives, will live with me forever. And he says, no, you don't want too much, G. You just want it more than them. Yeah, that's something my dad's you know, always said, yeah. Yeah, and that's stuck with me forever. It's a very different thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Has he been in movies? <laughs> um, Locks, Doc, and Two Smoking Cocks. Um, he did a lot of porn stuff. Yeah. I didn't ask for porn movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, was, you, you just said L- movies. L to pay. All right, hell to pay the craze, British Scarface, Triad. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. I will send you. I don't. Have you, have you heard the song that I, I sang with him? No, you've never shown us any. No. Right, I'll, I'll send it to you after this. Um, oh, much we did a cover of. Well, this is how it all started. We did have a. Um, we. 
I was looking for like way this is Jay the manager in the band going right how, how can we be different from all the other bands in Glasgow and we did a cover of The Clash I Fought the Law right um, Clash. and I was like like let's and at the moment at that time I was reading I was reading Dave Courtney's um, books his biographies uh, and I thought right how, how, let's let's base it around Dave Courtney and instead of saying I Fought the Law and the Law won we'll change it to I Fought the Law and I won um, hmm. And it's just all, it'll just be all about Dave Courtney and how he went to court and he, he took on the British justice system and he won and all that sort of stuff. And I just sent it to him and uh, I sent it to the magazine that he worked for. He used to write a column in this magazine. And out of the blue, I got a phone call and it was like, um, it was like, hello, is this Jay? And I went, uh, yeah, it was, this is Dave fucking Courtney. I went, fuck off. <laughs> 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 and, he went, no, and he was like, he started talking away to me. He's like, when I had read that you wrote a song called "I Fought the Law" and I won, I said, he said I'd have walked up to Glasgow to record that with you guys, you know. <laughs> um, so the sun was there. Um, they, 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 they documented the whole thing. I think we were in three or four different features that year with Dave Courtney. So it was, it was a great, great year, but it was just too much for some some mm. band members. I, I found that. Some people think that they want maybe fame when they're in a band, but once you get a little bit of taste of it, they find it's not for them, you know? I mean, that's mm. that's pretty fair enough, isn't it? Like, it's not for everyone. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if I can say this, I, I think I, I grew up with a lot of prejudice against me. So it's one thing I've always wanted to do is just to be able to stick the finger up at every single one of those. Is that just because you're a cunt? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Lars. <laughs> we don't talk about that, right? <laughs> I will be thinning by the time I'm 35. Let's say that. Well. Shut up. Don't worry about it, man. Hands to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken by the man. Spoken so, Jay, just to, just to clear things up with Mag being a fud and not reading things correctly, you still have your beard, yes? Oh yeah, so <laughs> right, okay. Just cut. So Mag, Mag can go through all this, and he can. Oh, find it's that. hilarious! And none of you guys have seen me without a beard. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, you I never seen me without a beard either. So it's all right. I was kind of. I, I kind of looked at. It's a baby. Looked at it, I was like, "The fuck is this?" And I saw the lip ring, and I'm like starting to piece it together in my head. I'm like, "I think it might be G." <laughs> <laughs> you still got the lip ring. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah, it's hidden, it's hidden amongst the beard. So there, there's another question I've got to ask you, Jay. Yeah. You said uh, when we started sending you, like, um, first, uh, what do you call it? Drafts. <sighs> first draft, no, first mixes of this, the EP. Um, when we sent you, well, there was one song in particular where you were walking with Doug and <laughs> it made you shit yourself. <laughs> what was that song and why? <laughs> Um, it was the Evil Dead voices in the background. Oh, um, rebirth. Is it Rebirth? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. uh, you know, it was a sort of scratchy, Evil Deady, demonic voices. And I was walking <laughs> with the part of the, the, and I was hoping to just listen to it first time. And I was like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> So what your next question was, what the fuck have I got myself into with these guys? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I didn't when I when I when I first met you guys and obviously when I heard the stuff, I was like, Can I do this? This is like the heaviest stuff I've ever I've ever been involved with. You know, I, I remember very, that was very that was very much like that was on the that, that was on the, yeah. the red card kind of thing for you, I remember that, yeah. I remember yeah, and it was like not be able to do know, it's still it's such a niche. Um, especially in, in Glasgow, and it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know, um, do anything with these guys, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, and it's, 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 it's gone wonderfully so well, I think, you know? Uh, fucking amazing. Oh, it's been amazing, say. and we can't thank you enough for everything yeah. you've done oh, for and, us. And so far, man. What I've done, all I do really is just, I do the same process I would, as I would with any band, and so... You know, even as I said, you have to learn as you go along, mm, and it yeah. doesn't matter what the genre of the band is you're working with. You still work the same way with the same people, and maybe change contacts here and there. But all the process you do of doing campaigns, everything's exactly the same. So it doesn't really yeah. matter about the style of band, you know. Mm-hmm. Aye, 
Uh, it's been a it's been an amazing journey so far, and we can't thank you enough for having me. I mean, never have never uh, thought uh, six um, months maybe. ago that you would have had your coupon on the, <laughs> the middle pages of your your newspaper. Do you know, I know what I mean? I know. I, I know that red carpet just flows down the stairs at work now. <laughs> you see, you see, carpet. It's more of a fucking rug. To be fair, sure. Just because you, in fact, your face is small in it, so they start your pish. I know, but I like. I still, I still kind of, you know, I, I've made sure to take a the wee picture of it. Like, yeah, that might be. I had I'm here. a guy from work who I worked. He went to my school. Blah blah. blah. He's went. He came to see us. All that crap. His mum actually phoned him up and says, "Is that Jackie's boy in the paper?" And he's like, <laughs> "Hi, mum." <laughs> <laughs> my mum showed up on that work. It was like such a big thing because I mean, if we had to release that stuff on our own, like what's War Torn got? We wouldn't have got War Torn's two years old and it's got a below... year old. There you go. A year and a half. Year, let's say year and a half, right? Just to make me seem less of a fud, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's gotten less interactions than Rebirth has. I, I looked at the um at the uh, analytics of Spotify and Rebirth is just which is a again on the ep you know that's just skyrocketed so it really shows like not just how much work you're doing but you must be doing something fucking right jay so as and the thing is as well this this um what we then do is when we look at the next release we look at what we've done in the past and go right well we've now set we'll we'll set a precedent so we now have to to look at that and, and beat that and then we look at we, we look at um uh, Count Havoc um, and we look at the people that are listening to it um, we look at the demographics and we go right I think there's a lot of American people here yeah. let's let's set a lot of our targets more to the US and see where that goes and you know you just you follow the path um, that's that's in front of you because all the clues are there do you know what I mean mm-hmm. so you just all keep right. following all these little clues and build it together and and hopefully um, and I think we will, we'll see a progression, you know, and every single mm. after that will be bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, that, that's the only way to do it. I mean, yeah, I completely agree. But especially, I think I think if we were to, even if we were to learn half the stuff that you knew, I think not having an outsider, and that, no, and I mean that in the most love possible, right? Uh, but outside <laughs> to the actual... Um, like musical acts aspect of the band, like to keep you within the lines, to keep you going. Hey, you need to kind of take yourself back a little bit here, <clears throat> and actually Definitely. keep your eye on the prize. You know, that that severely helps. I think so. I think it helps a band tremendously. You know, mm-hmm. if we if we just concentrate on getting the music right, we've got someone that we trust to do all the other stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and it's not just that as well. I, I've worked with bands in the past, and that once they get all this sort of stuff and things start to happen, they just sort of sit back, and you're like, "Well, what's the point of sitting back now? Because you, you should now be at a place where you're you're, you're marching forward, you know." Mm-hmm. But a lot sit back. But you guys have been absolutely brutal when it came to social media. You have <laughs> shared everything and posted constantly, and that's what you need. You know, you yeah. need everybody doing it. I think my Facebook's just flooded with band stuff now, and they can't yeah. just, they, they, everyone's like, oh, for fuck's sake, drink another one. It's like, aye, shut up, yeah. fucking look yeah. at that. Just check it out, for fuck's sake, man. I mean, it's such a big aspect of our lives, and people who aren't in band, aye. have never have been in that experience, don't understand. Like, I've wanted to be in a band since I was fucking, what, five years old or something like that, and it's ridiculous, like, how much of your time that you actually spend thinking about being in the band until you're in the band. And then we've got all this social media, which then, you know, like, you could be like the girls, you know, pretending to show what what arse they've got left and shit like that, you know. <laughs> but instead, we, we show our bands because it's it's the most precious thing about us. And it's yeah. the thing we're most proud of, which if people think that it's annoying, then they can suck a dick. <laughs> Saying nicely. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know what's funny? I remember. I think it might have been. It might have been Greg. I think I'd been managing you like one day or <laughs> two days, right? Okay. You, you were so. You were so fucking picky about this logo, the way it should be going. Oh yeah, top Greg. To bottom. Was, yeah. And I was like, and you, but you were like, you were, and I was like, no, I used to do this, and you were like, but which? 
it was obviously a very personal thing, and it makes sense now because this guy who just, just came in, he was like, no, your logo's going that way, and that's fucking it. You know, and you're like, no, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And I was like, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to last with this band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, a bunch, <laughs> we're a bunch of, like... Yeah, you know, I adapted to that, right? And I gave the text logo, but some people still use the wrong angle of the logo. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on swiftly before uh, Jake gets mad. I mean, um, <laughs> one, th- like, one thing in the band that probably helps a lot, like, we all... Like, Mag's are very, very much, like, just the music, pure music kind of side. Like, he writes the songs and he'll mix it and shit like that, but Greg... I'm not going to get into what I do because I, even I don't fucking know what I do. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> Greg, like does a lot of the the visual like side of it. Um, so I think I, I kind of get why he's always sitting there like, ah, no, it needs to be like a degree to the left and like oh, yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Success and shit like that, you know. So I I do kind of get that, but. I, I, I kind of do agree with Jay as well. Just shut up, man. It used to be uh, when a man is out of sky, I can I'm totally understand that because when a man is out of sky, um, uh, guitarist Rich was the guy that done all their um, design work, you know, uh, all the mm. graphics. Now, he was good at doing the graphics, but he didn't have the thing in his head that made the graphic pop or, or uh, it, it, had, it came across right. So mm. I was always saying that looks good you need to move it a bit to the left a, a bit up a bit down and sometimes it would take like 27 fucking messages to get this picture Jesus. the way i wanted it you know jay are um, you trying to tell me something here <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> i've barely had this conversation before it's like getting fucking deja vu oh so we did so we did didn't we, <laughs> didn't we? No, wait it was the same it was a single artwork i'm sure we had this conversation That's right. <laughs> Oh my god. But hey, I'm I'm just, I'm very, very, I needed I'm very an opinion. Petty. I went to date. I got one. Boom. So I appreciate <laughs> that. I didn't see that in a bad way. I seen it as and helped me, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> at the, at, this is coming towards the end of our time. So we have a super serious time. Super serious. <laughs> super serious part. We just talking about the the climate of covid essentially yes so first off let's talk because we i've had greg and mag both talk about like the band side of it but what about the managerial what about the actual behind the scenes what's that properly affected when it when it first kicked in and there was a prospect of no live music i thought fuck I thought, um, I run a management company here where bands want to play music. Um, they need to keep relevant, so they need to be playing music. They need to be out doing shows, and I thought, fuck, what's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. And I lost a few bands. I, I think I lost four bands in, in a week, uh, mostly English bands. But And I thought, mm-hmm. oh, this is, this is deteriorating. Mm-hmm. And I thought, right, plan together, think ahead. People need content, and I think that's when I hit up all the bands, yourselves included, and I was like, right, this is all about, just forget about playing live, this is all about getting releases out. I mean, we we were already good because you'd already planned, yeah. we'd already yeah. sort of put a timeline together, but a lot of bands didn't have anything like this. Um, and it was a case of saying, right, we need content out there, and you need to up your, 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 uh, up your game on social media, because the only way you're going to stay relevant now uh, as if you put stuff out there, as if you release singles, um, and uh, and just really up your social media game. Mm-hmm. So for the first couple of months, we had everybody doing that. Obviously, a few bands left. I think we had, I think it was down to like twelve or thirteen bands on the roster, and that's just that's oh. just March. Um, oh. And then I think people realised what I was doing with my bands. Mm-hmm. and they were like messaging me and emailing me going right we know there's no live music now but how, how what, what do we do um, and now you know like so in a funny funny way it's actually been really good for me because i have mm-hmm. more bands now than i ever did um but <clears throat> because they realize it's, it's not just about playing live music it's about yeah. mm-hmm. it's about social media and hopefully bands will learn 
that once you're putting releases together and you do it the right way, the way we are doing it, and you're on your you're on top of your game when it comes to social media, when we finally do come to doing gigs again, our social media A game will be there. We'll have had releases mm-hmm. out. You'll have actually built a following. There'll be more people that may want to see you now than that there had been before. And people you will know? that release, eh? Like, I don't know. Exactly. So as it's as I um, see a, ba- a band that I want to see live, I'm fucking paying for it. I don't care if I'm... Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely. Um, so it was worrying for a while. Um, but, I, I, you know, I wasn't going to let it get me down. I thought, right, no, there's other things we can do here. Um, I spoke to all the agents as well, and I was like, well, this is our formula, this is what we're going to do. Speak to your bands, tell them this is how we're going to do about it. Um, and, like, what, four or five months into the, the pandemic, and well, there's now uh, 23 bands on the roster, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, just I'm just a coffee boy. <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> I see CG, and I was like, I had no idea what he was talking about. So. <laughs> It's for, Mark, I told you about that when I got tagged. Jade accidentally tagged me in a post where all his agents were tagged, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so special! Oh, you didn't yeah, like shot me, me doing that. Yeah, been, and then he shot me doing I was like, you know what, I'll just be the fucking coffee boy then. <laughs> oh, oh, no, wait, yeah, I do remember now, I do remember now. Yeah, the coffee that boy. That was funny. I love that. The one who pretends to know nothing but actually knows more. That's the, <laughs> that's what you hope to be one day, <laughs> What? Um, but going back to the whole COVID yes, thing, yes, yes, we are. I'm quite certain that we're going to go into a lockdown next week. I yeah, think. Yep. I think it's heading that way. A Scottish lockdown, not just the English one. So, uh, I, I, no one, no one knew, no one thought they were going to be playing gigs anytime soon. Anyway, no. um, so I mean, if, if we keep we keep doing what we're doing, release wise. Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean us, like me, me and uh, you guys, like all the other yeah, bands th- out there. And the whole um, industry in general, yeah. You know, um, I think we'll be okay um, so long as these um, these venues still are still there for us. That's that's yeah. the that's the the, that's, the, the, sad guess, thing, yeah. the worrying thing, you know. That's yeah. I, that's a very actually I I haven't thought about that for months, but it's actually quite a scary prospect. That, like I I don't think this um, I don't think COVID will go away anytime soon, right? I've I've said it to almost everyone. I think that it's we're, I'm, if we ever had a prospect of playing gigs in another country, I don't think it will be for another couple of years. Um, oh yeah, I think, absolutely. I, I, th- I actually think in minimum it would be five years, but I think during those five years we'll start to build ourselves back up. But the prospect of not having any foundation to begin with, like no venues or anything mm-hmm. like that, is extremely like oh. Shit, this is that's a- the that's the eye opener. Eh? It's mm. it is frightening, like because so far the UK, well, Scotland is on their arse with the music industry, yeah. and it's just fucking shit. I mean, it doesn't help that we're uh, um, if, if these venues, yeah, if these venues stay open, but I think we'll see uh, the grassroots proper flourishing because people will be keen as fuck to go to gigs, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I think our type of gigs. Um, the lower level gigs, as in the smaller venues, you maybe your yeah. 100, your 200 cap venues, yeah. they're going to be the ones that are open before your hydros and your, oh. you know, yeah, your I SECs. Agree. So I think the smaller I ones think, are going right. to drop first. Uh, hydro was up till 2022, is it not? Is that right? I wouldn't be uh, surprised to be honest. I mean, I I think, I'm sure I heard, I read somewhere that the hydro was just completely shut. For well, with, with massive with massive gigs like that, you know the Hydro, the O2 Academies and stuff like that, it is disgusting. Like I, yep, it is disgusting. So if you had COVID and you didn't know, or even had a chance of having a COVID strain that isn't um, identifiable right now, and you go in an environment like that, you you'll be fucked. So I do understand why they've said that no, no. and just completely. No pushed away so last question and this is more of a uh, more of a question geared towards people who maybe aren't in the roster but uh, people who are in the roster as well but a lot of people who aren't in the roster maybe finding it really difficult is there something you would like people to actually properly know or some words of extreme wisdom that you would like to share 
Ah, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> I, I just think if, uh, if maybe not words of wisdom, but I think we'll get through this. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll get to the other side and we'll be better for it. If everybody works their ass off, which we have been doing, yeah. um, bands are learning more techniques. But, but I, I've learned more in the last three or four months about PR than, than I ever did yeah. just because I thought, fuck it, I'm going to learn all this stuff and I can implement it and use it for my own bands, which I have done. Mm-hmm. Um, if people learn a little bit of everything, they'll come out of this a far better band because they'll be an all round mm-hmm. um an all round unit. They won't just be there performing or writing songs. They'll have a bit of business ingenuity about them too. So if they put in the work now, I think when they come out of it they're gonna be so so much, so so much better for it. You can you can even see it in what you guys have done as well. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Um yeah. so I think yeah, I think there's a lot of hope. Um <laughs> but you're gonna get people you, you you know you're gonna get people that are that are down about it and uh, for me I, I see a lot of hope you know because I work with so many bands and, and mm-hmm. we're keeping them on the right track and I, I, I uh, it's despondent that we don't have any live shows but I think they'll come and when they do come I think they will be they'll be fantastic you know yeah I agree. right well that's all the time we have for today so thank you so much Jay for coming on to the podcast and talking shite for an hour and a half <laughs> yes literally literally um i also want to thank greg for co-hosting today and boom <laughs> and <laughs> this has been the hour of arc arrival thank you for tuning in i'd like to thank my mom i'd like to thank god <laughs> for inspiring me. Uh, i like